Okay, Claude 3.5 has officially blown my mind. I really didn't think it would be this big of a deal, this big of a difference. So I'm kind of late to playing around with it, especially when it came to all things coding, animations. I mean, I was about to hire or look anyways for an animator for different diagrams and graphics and now, I'm gonna get Claude to do it. It is incredible. The headlines around it have not disappointed. And today we are going to go ahead and explore what Claude 3.5 is capable of, but even more importantly, take a step back and have a conversation as to what does this mean? What does this mean for our future when it comes to so many different roles, not only within tech, but when you think how quickly now it can create different diagrams, animations, soon to be really high quality videos, I'm very sure. I mean, the ideas, the potentials feels endless. But before we go ahead and play around with Claude, we need to understand exactly how quickly this tech is moving. I'm gonna put up on screen here a graphic or animation, which by the way, was made with Claude, of the timeline, the progress when it comes to AI as a whole. I mean, AI has been around since the 1950s. It's not a new concept, but seeing how quickly now these models are progressing, maybe in some areas, not so much. I think gone are those media headlines where I think AI is going to take over everything, but in some areas, especially around video animations, coding, it is progressing really quickly. All right, let's go see exactly what Claude 3.5 is capable of. We are going to make some really cool React games actually. Oh wait, before we do though, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech, future tech, coding, AI, all, all things tech. All right, now let's go. Okay, but first we need to talk about something new that was released in Claude 3.0, which was something called Artifacts. And this is something I've been doing a lot of reading on. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, but when you enable it, which by the way, it's enabled or it's turned off to start with, you can easily enable it, whether you are paid, free, anything like that. And I'll show you how to do that. But first, here's what Artifacts is and why it is such a big deal. Artifacts will allow Claude to share standalone content with you. So essentially when you used to use Claude in the past and say you were using it for some different coding tasks, what would happen is it would share the code with you, but then you would have to take that code, copy it, paste it into a different IDE, whether it be say Repl.it, so you want to use it in the browser or something like VS Code and run it. Now, if you have artifacts enabled on, all you need to do, it will actually open up a new window for you or a new uh, section, sorry, I should say, not a window within that tab and it will share you the end result. This is a game changer because you visually can see what you are building. It's incredible. And I've been using this actually quite a bit to create a lot of SVGs, which actually any SVG or animation you see throughout this video is created by using Claude. It will create the code for me, I'll export the SVG, and voila, it's really cool. So one thing they say though, some common examples of how Artifact can be used includes documents, code snippets, websites such as single page HTML, scalable vector graphics, which I just shared about, diagrams and flowchart, which is another great way to use it as well. And then interactive React components. The re it's blowing React out of the water. It's pretty incredible. All right, let me show you how exactly to enable this to be on for you. Okay, so you can see here, I am in Claude 3.5, as it says at the bottom. And what the chat that I'm having with Claude right now is around is an SVG of the timeline that you saw earlier of its different releases. And as I'm filming this video, I'm still working on the timeline. I don't love where it's at right now. So we'll see where you will have seen where it got to based on what it was at the beginning of this video. Now to turn on artifacts, hover over your initials here in the left-hand corner, then click on your whatever email it is. From there, go to feature preview. And in feature preview, this is where you can turn on new features. And in this case right now, artifacts. So you can see I have it on. All right, let's go ahead and run this just to see as an example of what artifact can do. Uh, show me the updated SVG animation. All right. There we go. I guess that prompt wasn't great, but here you can see it working in example. So it's writing out the code for me. And then we can see here the chart that it is producing. As I mentioned, I don't love this. I think it's still kind of wonky. It's not the best example, but just to share with you how you can now you know, be building out your code or talking to Claude on one side and then seeing the end result. So through preview or the actual code. And then from there, you can download to file or copy the content. This just took everything to the next level. 
Okay, I keep on reading that one thing Claude 3.5 is really good at is generating code very well. And then also with artifacts, being able to see those results, especially of course with React, which is really cool. I remember how long it took me to make my first React to-do list. It's painful to think about now thinking how anyone can code using Claude. No, I'm not saying anyone is a software engineer. There is much more to it than that. But yes, anyone can now code with Claude. Anyone can take an idea and make it a reality. It's pretty cool. So what I did here was, this is a long prompt, so just hear me out. We're not gonna go through the whole thing. You can pause this video here and read through it. But the goal of it is to create a simple 2D survival game using React and SVG graphics. And this prompt is not unique to myself. What I did was I went on Tom's Guide. I love Tom's Guide. He has some really cool, I don't even know if it's an actual Tom who writes the guide. Leave it below if there is an actual Tom. But Tom's guide, they gave some really interesting prompts to try out and I wanna do that because it looked like it created a really cool game. Now, obviously this prompt is intense. We are getting really detailed here. I don't typically get this detailed when I'm writing a prompt, but if you're using it to build an actual product, then you need to get very detailed. Like a product meaning an actual game you want end users to play or have something that you're putting out in the world, getting detailed like this is great. So definitely screenshot this prompt, save it, whatever you need to do. Let's try it out. I don't know why I'm so excited for this. I actually haven't tried out this prompt yet. So we are doing it live, real time. Let's see here. It's so fast too. It's so much faster than the old ones, like the old versions. Can you imagine making this game from scratch with React? It would take so long. I remember I used to make games from scratch with React and it took so long, trying to make games, I should say. All right, let's see. The, the suspense, it's, it's intense. Some people have been asking, oh, here we go. I'll finish my thoughts. Up, down, okay. Now, how do we play it? Okay, let's try again. Restart, okay, we can actually restart it. So we wanna stay away from these red balls. One second here. Right, don't we? Go up to the top. Yeah, survival game. By surviving as long as you can on this grid. This is a pretty simple one. We could prompt it to get more red balls, but look how cool this is. It literally, it's not just visually there, but it's actually functioning. This is really cool. All right, let's go back to Claude and let's see another one on Tom's Guide. This is where I'm getting it from, Tom's Guide. A virtual bookshelf, that's cool. I'm not gonna do a virtual bookshelf, but that's React as well. All these are React. Family Tree Builder, which is really interesting, you know, it's more so thinking of a to-do list. You're inputting something and then it's sharing it on screen. Making pixel art, this is another one, let's close all these ads, that I wanted to try. So who doesn't love creating block by block pixel art? Turning the artifact into a simple artboard with an export button. All right, let's do this. These prompts are amazing, they're so long, I thought this is really cool. I can't even, you gotta, I'll link Tom's guide below so you can use these prompts as well. Let's try this out. One thing that stands out to me though is just how quick it is. I know I said that earlier, but it goes so quickly compared to older versions. It just still, it blows my mind. And I'll be honest with you, I haven't used ChatGPT for a while. And after this upgrade with Claude 3.5, I don't think I'm going to use ChatGPT unless they come up with something really interesting, really revolutionary. This Claude 3.5 is where my home is now. It's where I'm going to stay. It's where I'm going to, to be. Oh, and as I'm saying that, oh, okay, let's see here. As I'm saying that, we're getting unsupported libraries or icons. Paint, okay, what can we use as an alternative for this code to run? Let's see, let's problem solve with Claude. I'm curious to hear your take though. I think one thing I'm really curious about is using technology like this, like Claude 3.5, for example, and what does that look like for software engineering? Now, I'm not saying, oh, it's gonna replace software engineers. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, what about four different roles, different people at different companies 
using this technology to code. It enables them to code so much faster, so much better, solve problems. What does that mean for everyone? Does it mean that the demand for engineers goes down, changes in responsibilities? I don't have that answer, and but it is something that I think we need to start asking those questions. Right now, companies are so tight as to what the technology they are allowing to be integrated into their systems and not, and that makes total sense. But as this technology, as you've seen, I'll put up an, another Claude SVG graph here, how quickly artificial intelligence and these LLMs are growing and moving. Maybe they won't grow and move in every direction, but with engineering and coding, it is one area that it is getting very good at, which is very interesting. I really don't think it will ever replace these jobs, but be a very powerful tool that we have to learn to use, even looking at how detailed those prompts were. Okay, the suspense is over. I'm sharing my screen here and I'm not drawing. So let's try and draw. Let's do draw selected. So we can select different options here. Let's do draw and let's select nice bright pink. And there you go. Make patterns, draw as is. Think how much fun kids would have doing this. If you have a kid, I definitely highly, I highly recommend you, you let them play around with this. It's so cool. Yeah, I'm having so much fun. Okay, I'm filming a video. Tiff, stop playing. But this is really cool. And then what we can do is we can export it, uh, copy the contents, see the code here. Rate is exceeded. Oh no. That's okay. But it's really incredible. I'm kind of blown away. I'm curious to hear what you think about all this functionality. Now in these examples, we went through more so different coding prompts or prompts that we can use with Artifact because Artifact is really good at creating little SVGs or React components. And I think one of the best ways to play around with that is through making different animations or games, very visual things. It's really interesting. I'm very curious to get your take on this. Leave it down in the comments. Okay, in this video, we really just scratched the surface of what is possible with Claude 3.5. I highly suggest you go check it out, play around with it, see what you can build. And I think one of the positives about these technologies like Claude 3.5 is it's going to create a lot of creativity. People are now going to be or feel enabled that they too can go and build whatever ideas they have. And that's really empowering. If you wanna stay ahead, the key to doing so is getting on board with this technology, starting to use it and build some really cool things with it. All right, hit that subscribe button. I will see you all very soon. Bye.